Hey Leute, willkommen auf äh, Lasergurkenland, dem Anarchie-Server mit der IP 149.202.127.134 oder alternativ der Domain silihung.com. Ähm, das ist ein Anarchie-Server ohne Regeln und Administration. Ähm, genau, und wir schauen heute ein Video vom Brian Club Channel an. Äh, ich weiß nicht, von wem der Vortrag ist. Ähm, der, der Titel des Videos ist CLI Network Forensics. Link ist hier immer in der Beschreibung und von wem der Vortrag ist, ich nehme an, der wird, ah ja, bei Kevin Tires, äh, da ich nehme an, der wird sich jetzt dann auch gleich äh, selber vorstellen. Genau. So, dann der Plan für die Folge ist natürlich noch ein bisschen Lava, wollen würde ich sagen, ein bisschen hier. So, uh, oh, oh Gott, 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 ist der laut. Ui, ui, ui. dabei. I 
remember it is a person selling tea never dies painfully. Um, all all pawn stars to seem to need double penetration. One. Whoops. <laughs> Where I'm really interested is layer four, three, and two, which is your transport network and data link. Um, because everything gets encapsulated like this. So you have your application data, which is going to be like your HTTP, and then they stick a TTP header on there, and that's your segment, is what we formally call that. So it's your layer four header and your data. And you throw an IP header, and it becomes a packet. A layer two header becomes a frame. And then you throw a preamble, and you throw it on the wire, and those are just fit. And to see that uh, concretely, that's our layer two header that I have highlighted right there. So you can see the MAC next protocol. Uh, it's a little bit hard to see, but the next one's the IP header. So we can look at that. Uh, for instance, looking at this, I can tell you this is the ICMP packet, and uh, it's going to 192 addresses. Um, the next one is our protocol header. In this case, it's ICMP. We can see that it's a uh, type 8 code 0, which is a... Well, about to minute this. Ich bin so gespannt. So it's the real four header in your data. Und das kommt so richtig gut. Das ist ein Packet, a layer 2 header, it becomes a frame and then you throw a preamble and you throw it on the wire and those are just fit. And to see that uh, concretely, that's our layer 2 header that I have highlighted right there. So you can see the MAC next protocol. Uh, it's a little bit hard to see, but the next one's the IP header, so we can look at that. Uh, for instance, looking at this, I can tell you this is an ICMP packet, and uh, it's going to 192 addresses. Um, the next one is our protocol header. In this case, so it's ICMP. We can see that it's a uh, type 8 code 0, which is a request to meet or a reply. I don't have that one memorized. Again, the meetware is not really reliable. And then your actual data of what happens in your protocol. So one of the big things I had to remove from this was talking about setting up capture infrastructure, which is something I actually get a lot of questions on. So if you have questions on how to set up packet, packet acquisition on your network, please email me. I'm more than happy to help with that, um, whether it's just questions or even doing hands-on work. Uh, for the love of the game, I love doing packet stuff. So uh, this on Secudio.com on the front page is my original CactusCon talk in PDF form where all these slides are included, so feel free to review that. If it's not animated, all cool. So as I mentioned before, knowing your protocols is really important. Um, protocols act in normal ways, so we can uh, study those protocols to know how they should be acting with stimulus and response. RSDs are actually not so bad to read, um, especially if you have an interest in the protocol you're reading about. Uh, you can use some layers, and this is a little more slightly higher networking uh, thought, but if you have something that's running TCP, you can actually make some assumptions about the function of the higher level protocol. Um, something that's going to be connection oriented, generally a little more reliable. If it's UDP, you might be dealing with some, some sort of media traffic. If it's something else, then good luck. Who knows? Uh, and then if you have some servers, just fuzz them. Like, figure out some fuzzing programs and just throw garbage at them what happens and see how their protocol stacks handle it. It's something I do on weekends. And then uh, a lot of questions I get when people are setting up capture, capture infrastructures is how do I deal with encryption because I have all this HTTPS traffic and I don't know what crazy porn my employees are looking at. Um, unfortunately, you can't break that, but also fortunately you can't break that. So mm -hmm. depending on the, uh, the uh, angle you're coming at this, you can do some stuff in line, like SSL strip, to figure out what your employees are doing or your kids or whatever. But uh, that can be a little bit slow, and there's some trickery. You have to do a certificate to make it transparent. Uh, but you can use the metadata, just like uh, Hans mentioned. You know, source port, destination port, source address, destination address. Those sorts of things don't get encrypted um, unless you're dealing with IP stack, but that's you know, a whole set of different problems. So you can get an idea at least. NS look up an IP and say, oh, okay, so they're going to this crazy, you know, evil.eporn.com. Oh, I don't even want to know. Um, SSH command in the is fascinating for another talk. So let's get to the tools, which is my favorite part. Um, I love this quote. These are our, our tools shape us. Or excuse me, we shape our tools and they shape us. Wireshark is a great example of this. I've met so many lazy analysts who are like, yeah, 
I'm a computer analyst expert. I know how to use Wireshark. I'm like, what else? Oh, just Wireshark. That's all you need. I am very skeptical of uh, GUI tools because most GUI tools, in my opinion, are places where data goes to die. If I can't easily extract data out of a tool, then I don't like to use it. So uh, that's why I like going to the command line because standard in, standard out. It's beautiful. So there's going to be many tools for the job. Um, my solutions, even on my answer or for the uh, questions I posted on Studio, are just one way to do it. I would actually encourage you to think of other ways to solve the uh, exercises that I have up there. Uh, one tiny thing is you can change the uh, privilege level that your PCAP allocations run at, and that's very important to do because in Snort and uh, in Wireshark there's some buffer overflow vulnerabilities where they can send you malcrafted or uh, malcrafted packets intentionally targeted to those applications and. Most of the time, when you run Wireshark, it runs root, and then it pops that, and you have root on the box. So nice. uh, there's plenty of tutorials on how to set that up on Google. I am a big believer in picking your core set of tools, and then learning those really well. I'm still working on refining you know, my core set of tools, but also play with other ones, see what you like, see what you don't like. And if one doesn't exist, absolutely please build it. I uh, actually released a tool with this talk, which I was pretty proud of. Share it. Uh, I'll, so I will actually show you, but it's a uh, Python wrapper for conversations in C Sharp because the C Sharp conversation interface, is, in my opinion, is very hard to use, especially when you're trying to select a conversation. And we'll see that in a second. So the thing that a lot of uh, Linux and Unix command line tools is written on is libpcap or winpcap on the Windows platform. It's just a common packet collection interface. Very cool. Um, yeah, I'm trying to keep it to myself in Erlang of all things because I'm stupid and I just really fun with Erlang. So there's going to be two types of capture formats that we're going to be using. Um, we're doing really well on time, so I might turn it down on the tempo a little bit. Thank you for bearing with me, by the way. So PCAP, which is packet capture. Um, it's the most basic format, pretty lightweight. Um, I have honey pots set up all over the world that I like to capture. I use PCP to capture PCAP. And then there's PCAP NG, which is what the Wireshark tool suite uses. And um, that you can have comments as more granular timestamps. Um, so hopefully we'll get past 2034 or whatever it is. With our uh, PCAP. Um, and you can, one of the big advantages is with a regular PCAP, you can only have a single interface feeding into the PCAP file. Or with PCAP NG, you can have multiple capture interfaces. All right, so anyone here use TCP dump? Yep, exactly. TCP dump is probably my favorite tool um, because it's so simple but it's super powerful because it's UCF filters, and we'll get to that in a second. Uh, you can read traffic from the wire. You can read it from a file. So if uh, I've used this last week. A user was saying, hey, I can't get to this website. What's going on? And I fired up, uh, unfortunately, it was a wire chart. It was a Windows box. But I saw resets coming immediately, like faster than it is reasonable. So I'm like, oh, the proxy's blocking you. That's exactly what it was. Um, I've done similar things on TCP dump. It can be a little bit arcane, but it's pretty useful. Um, that's how I capture packets if I have the option to do so. And uh, you can output, you can type the output of it for, depending on the type of output that you choose. And again, it requires root, so just be aware of that. Um, try to put it in its own group. So normally I don't like just reading off flags, but there's some ones that I do want to point out. Uh, the one that you pretty much always have to run is dash n, which disables name resolution. If you leave name re resolution on, it's going to severely impact how quickly you can capture or read things off the wire. I just turn that off. Um, give it a capital D, and you can see the interface that you can actually capture on. Um, and then you use I with the interface description to actually tell it to select the interface. W, no surprise, write R. example of it earlier when I showed the little colored packet. And capital X will give you the uh, output uh, in hex as well as ASCII. And if you do dash D, it'll give you some extra IP info. And uh, I believe it does capture layer 2, but that doesn't get expressed very much because most of the time we don't care about layer 2 information. Oh my god, what's happening layer 2 nochmal? 
wo fängt denn das an? Application, all pointers, presentation? Fängt das bei 0? Fängt das bei 1 an? Ist es Presentation? Ich weiß nicht mal, was Presentation ist. Oh Leute, also mein OSI-Model. <lacht> Yeet. Äh, keine Ahnung, was Layer 2 ist. So, if you were following along, capture some pings uh, using sudo, tcdump, n, i, whatever your interface is, and write it to a pcap. And then over here, at the very end of that line, is uh, icmp, which is a filter. So we can actually tell, tell uh, tcpdump what we should actually be capturing. And before I do a quick example, I want to speak to BPF, which is a Berkeley packet filter. Which is super cool. Um, it can filter packets pretty much any way that you can conceive of, uh, as long as you know what the fields and the protocols are. You can actually overload these things too, which is a whole different talk. So your basic primitives that you're going to be dealing with is an ID and a qualifier. So the ID is what you're looking for, and a qualifier modifies that. So uh, in this example, um, if I'm looking for IP9 equals 1, does anyone know what that means? It's ICMP, because the ninth byte offset in IP header is in indicating what the next protocol is. So with that filter, I'd only see ICMP traffic. Uh, there's also abbreviations, just like uh, I have pointed out here, where ICMP equals IP9 equals 1. So if you don't know off the top of your head what the TCP flags are, you might be able to wonder for that. Um, and then here I have an example of anding. You can actually bitmap these out, which is pretty cool. So if you want to see an at or a sin, Anything with a sin flag, including sin, synac, or Christmas games, or whatever, um, you would use the ampersand to bang equal to zero. Um, of course, you don't have time to get into but yeah. Let me see if I can do a quick example of TCP dump here, just so you can get comfortable with the output. What am I doing here? Uh, So that's the output. Pretty all right. Not too bad. You can see where it's going from, where it's going to. Let me uh, throw that capital X on there so you can see what I'm talking about. So as you can see, we have our, and this is oddly formatted, but uh, our IP header and then the actual ASCII uh, output of that. So if you had something that wasn't plain text, ich dachte, FTP Passwort sind Plaintext. Alright, so back to Presentation. Vielleicht SFTP nicht. I don't know. Was hat er gesagt? Was oder was ein Plaintext? Alright, a few more hands in TCP. Da müssen wir noch mal hören. So back to Presentation. Output of that. So if you had something that was and then the actual ASCII uh, output of that. So if you had something that wasn't plain text, like that wasn't. NCD's password, for instance, you can see that in there. Yeah, wasn't. All right, so back to the presentation. And of course, it's gone. There we go. All right, so who here has used Wireshark? Oh mein Gott, wenn ich hier gestorben wäre, hätten meine Items... Oh mein Gott, ich hätte meine mending Pickets verlieren können. Um, so in der Bin ich bescheuert? Das ist gar keine Lava, sie hier, oder? Oh. 
I will go over the uh, ones that get included. So the first one is dump cap, which is essentially a TCP dump. And it's actually what you're using if you use C sharp or Wireshark, the underlying packet capture mechanism. Uh, you can feed it BPF filters, um, so you can you know, selectively capture things. It doesn't split the packets off the screen, but it does keep a running count, which is pretty nice. Um, and if you absolutely need the packets in NV format, this is what you want to do. Um, Oh, on Ubuntu, there's bugs. That's why I paused there. There's a bug that you can't write oh, in any directory that. other than temp. Um, at least that I've tested. So I've tried to write it in my home directory. It doesn't work. It's very mysterious. Uh, another one that I really like is cap infos, and this gives you like ah, data about the packet capture, like how long was it, when did it start, when did it end, how many packets did temp. you capture, how much data did you capture. Um, I have a model that I've written for that, which you can't really see, but it's a GitHub. Um, I'm going to rewrite that because I wrote that a long time ago. It's absolutely terrible. It can be on there. If you ever seen your own code that you wrote like a year ago, you want to punch yourself in the face with a time machine? Anyway. Um, so that's cool. Uh, I've done a lot of statistical analysis. Uh, I'm actually in the process of using this library for the statistical analysis I'm doing. It's, it's not totally unuseful, so I might take a look at it if you want to daily average of the number of packets you're capturing. Another really cool one that you're going to need if you're dealing with large PCAP is edit cap. So what this is used for is chopping uh, uh, packets from a PCAP file. So you have duplicates, you can get those out. You can actually set sort of the threshold for duplicate detection. Uh, if you need to change threshold, or if you need to change file formats from PCAP to PCAP NG or vice versa, you can use edit cap to do that. You can truncate packets, which is really nice because, you know, let's say you have a 1500 byte packet and you really only need it for 64 bytes because you're using the header information. You can use edit cap to do that, and that's something I do pretty frequently. And then, probably the best thing about it is you can use this to adjust timestamps. If anyone's ever done any incident response or incident intrusion analysis, and all of the different systems on a network are using a different clock source, it is a nightmare to try to figure out what happened. Um, and you really have to normalize your timestamps. And it doesn't remove your original PCAP. So that was a question I got at CactusCon and I, I answered that. So merge cap, um, you can guess what it does. It merges caps. I'm not talking about half. Sorry, I just the joke. Um, I got a laugh. I'll take it. Uh, essentially, like, stitches them together. So you can have multiple PCAPs and you just stitch them all together, which would be nice. Like, let's say you have five workstations and you want to put them all in the same PCAP for some reason. Stitch those together, get an idea of what happened. Merge cap can do that for you. Um, or you can do dash A and it'll just append each other, like, one after another. You may want to do it for some reason. I have no holz dabei. Ah, doch hier. Wow. Now, how many people here have used T Shark? Nice. T Shark is essentially command line wire shark. Um, it needs a good book that I've thought about writing, but I'm not that great with T-Shark. Um, I don't want people like relying on my efficient knowledge to be a T-Shark Aha, expert. so viel zu but CLI main, aber dann nicht T-Shark verwenden. Ja, ja. Uh, you can use display filters when you're reading packets, which is huge, because as we know, it's like 500 pages of display filters in the Wireshark man page or something ridiculous. Um, you can follow conversations, which if you use Wireshark, you know that that's really cool. It essentially reassembles TCP conversations, and you can see what happened. You know, uh, you can get HTTP headers. Obwohl eigentlich will ich auch beim Testen gute Ideen ein bisschen tiefer für Lava. Carve files out SCP conversation, which is something I might show next year at CactusCon if I take my CFP. Um, you can do command line statistics, so like protocol hierarchy, which is really nice. You can look at the conversation and count the bytes from bytes to. So it's like almost a, uh, a mini flow, which is pretty cool, while still maintaining the integrity of the original PCAP. Um, I don't cap with it. If I'm going to cap with something in the cap suite, I dump cap, or I will use it to dump, because I think it's better. Much more better. So useful flags. If you are capturing for some reason, dash n is huge. If you're reading, it's not that big of a deal. One of the things that I like to use dash n ah, nice. is, is that it won't 
Also hier steht nur dieselbe Name Resolution. talking about so if you do dash t fields it says hey print fields from my packet dash e tells you what fields to print and those are in the same like naming syntax as wireshark so ip.frc would be ip source and then dash e tells you how to print it so if we look at our recipe right here for printing out source uh, ip import and destination ip import for tcp you can see here i'm t shark no name resolution reading the file using a wireshark read filter of tcp to only and then I'm saying print field, IP source, source port, IP desk, desk port, a separator being a comma, and then a quotes equals double quote, or your quote equals B is double quote. So now I have a double quoted CSV file that I can import to Excel or any cool system that I want. Um, hm. Very, very useful. Excel or any other cool system. GG on the well. <laughs> And then dash Z, like I talked about, this one's really cool. Um, IOPHS is protocol hierarchy summary, so it'll tell you like here's 100% of your traffic is Ethernet, and 80% of your traffic is TCP, and 40% of that traffic is HTTP, and 20% of your traffic is UDP, and 99% of that is UDP, or is DNS. So it's really good. It's one of the first things I do with a reasonable sized PCAP file, and to just get an idea of what happens. Because if there's a bunch of you know uh, what looks like voice traffic, then I treat it differently than I would something that I'm trying to figure out if there's an SMT in the download or upload. Uh, dash D com is awesome. If you've never seen like TCP conversations before, it's awesome. So you can see source, destination, what was transferred, uh, number of bytes, how long it lasted. And then you can use dash D follow to actually follow those conversations and see what transpired. And then if any of you are fans of expert info, you can see it expert, comma, whatever the protocol is, and it'll look for anomalies and how that protocol is executed in your actual PCAP file. I've had mixed results with that, but it's one of those things I think is always worth a, uh, a run. And then here's my plug for PyConvos, because it's super quick. Um, so normally, actually I don't have to make anything normal, so I'll just show you the good news. It's all going so well. You guys have been an excellent audience, by the way. Thank you. Much more. Alright, so Python. Ist das eigentlich eine Kamera auf dem Bildschirm gerichtet oder was das für Qualität? Sieht ja fancy aus. So you can see here I enumerate all the conversations that have happened here. By default it's TCP. And you can see how many bytes were transferred in the duration. So this is not very interesting. 443, it's encrypted. 22, not very interesting. So we'll look at this one. And the thing that PyConvos does that uh, you can't do in T-Shark natively is you can use this identifier over here and just get the identifier and it will actually show you what happened. So you can see here I went to some website that is hopefully not embarrassing. Yeah, no snip. I think that's good. Um, and X dash headers, by the way, or extension headers, they're not normally part of HTTP protocol. A lot of malware. 
developer uses those to like for the fact that CQ servers, so that's what we're gonna look at. Or maybe developers like myself use them for various reasons. Not that I'm a developer, I'm not really old thing to make. Uh, I space roll Python and occasionally it works. So but yeah, so that's what it looks like. I'm actually just hitting the good proxy stuff. That's, I'm taking like a beta SAM certification for network forensics and analysts, and they talk about the good proxy stuff there. All right, so that's quite combos. I had to give myself a little bit of a plug. I got like 90 seconds left. So uh, this is included in my, or the ex underscore t shirt pcap is included in my class pcap that I have on studio. So please go on there and download the pcap file if you'd like and run these and just see what they do. Um, and here's some example commands so you can just follow through. Again, it has that recipe. Uh, it will like take you, if you have C-Shark installed, like five minutes. It, and it's worth it just to see the output, in my opinion. Yeah, that's good. Cool. So again, it has that recipe. So for t shirt.pcap is included, sort of a plug. All right, so that's quite convos. I had to give myself a little bit of a plug. I got like 90 seconds left. So. Uh, this is included in my, or the ex underscore t shirt dot pcap is included in oh, it's in my GitHub link. Yeah, it's coming up. Please go on there and download the pcap file if you'd like, and run these, and just see what they do. Um, and here's some example commands so you can just follow through. Again, it has that recipe. Uh, it will like take you if you have the shirt installed like five minutes, and it's worth it just to see the output. In my opinion. Snort, real quick, one of the things I love to do is just uh, have a generic snort instance, hopefully have some tune up rules, run a peek after it, look for weirdness, and then that can, uh, this is more of a technique, so I should probably move it to the next section, but uh, go through, see if there's any alerts that pop up, and that's usually a first good place to start um, with figuring out if there's anything strange. Uh, apps get snort, doesn't run out of the box, so uh, it's a good exercise to figure out how to disable rules. And uh, non-PCAP tools, I don't have to talk about this nearly as long as I did with uh, my other class, but who is often my tier is on the registrar, who be, which is a uh, shorter IT information thing, I'm actually contributed to that project, I have their Python uh, library that connects to that, I run that. Um, and then cut, awk, egrep, sort, unique, those things are super great when combined with PCP DOM for T-Shark, because you can reformat your output. I don't have to clean those phrases. And a lookup post geo lookups. I have a geo lookup thing on my GitHub as well. I haven't looked at it in a long time. It's not evil, but I'm not 100% sure it works anymore. So. No, it's actually a so snort when it loads its rules file, it uh, parses all the rules and makes sure that they parse properly. So there's a very strict format that snort rules are in. And there's one default rule that isn't formatted correctly. Um, and I think it may be just a difference between versions. So uh, you actually have to go in and disable it. But it's pretty good, but I'll see which rule is causing it to fail. Um, so just use that as a guide. All right, I'm gonna go in here. All right, next presenter, by the way. I have like 40 seconds left. So uh, the more you have to start with, the better off you'll be. More of a both caps is always better. Uh, obviously there's a trade off between storage and collection capability and uh, the ability to parcel these PCAPs, um, but more PCAPs are better in my opinion. It's an iterative process, you're probably not going to find what you're looking for in your first pass, just like anything. So be willing to go through it a few times. Uh, don't forget your basic command line tools, and when you write a tool, which I can't do that, it, most of GitHub or Sourcefire or Google Code or whatever you want to do, because um, I love you, and uh, I love them. So the first thing that you're gonna to need to know when you're actually parsing this stuff out, if you're looking at old PCAPs, is you need manageable PCAPs. Um, I've dealt regularly with 300 gigabyte PCAPs, which you can't use in wire charge, obviously. Um, so command line tools are perfect for that sort of stuff. If they're stream oriented, you don't have to worry about buffering you know, all of your RAM. Um, that's the way it needs to work in that order. Um, time is a factor. You know, it takes 90 minutes to parse 300 gigs on the server, the, a Mac Mini server. So be aware that when you're going through these things, don't be like, oh yeah, I'll look through 500 gigs of the app in the next 15 minutes. It's probably not gonna work. Um, chop them into smaller PCAPs using edit caps, that's something I like to do. And then if you need to, use merge caps to put them back together. Or cut out only what you need for an investigation, merge them back together for your team. Uh, obviously, you really can't do that if you're doing like custody kind of stuff, but uh, or integrity evidence. Uh, also, 
something I don't have on here is hash all your CCAP signals. Uh, CAP info, as I mentioned earlier, does hash all your CCAP for you, so you can just store those hashes off to the side. And then uh, finding sort of meta info like metadata, uh, so conversations to and from, find weird ports you're not used to seeing, uh, pull out all of your IPs and run them against IT Void or some other IT database to see if there's any possible evil going on. And if you know your network, like your home network or your corporate network, you should have a vague idea of what should be going on there. So uh, if you see some things happening, run them down. Run PCAP, see what's going on, find the user, uh, fire them, I don't know. Do what you want. And finally, um, Network Forensics Challenge. I can't remember the website. There's a few of them. Find them, view them. They're really fun. Uh, usually have pretty good write-ups too. Uh, Securedio.com slash plug.html. Again, where I put the exercises from my original version of the class, which I had to cut out. And if you have a uh, question you want to send to me directly, kpires at gmail.com. Um, I don't really think there's time. I don't want to take up too much more time for the next presenter. But uh, thank you very much for putting up with me going through this very fast. Um, there's a lot here, so again, my email box is open to anyone here who's interested in this and wants to do you know, a one-on-one -on -one or a small group or have me back here. So um, I believe in this when you're staring at a 500 game PCAP that you see difficulty in every opportunity, or excuse me, the customer sees difficulty in every opportunity and an optimist sees an opportunity in every difficulty, which in my case means, hey, I'm going to write something because I'm that guy. And uh, there's my license. So, uh, take it to some Cool. Um, ooh, non-commercial. You get. Ja, ich bin ja ein großer Fan von, von commercial usage, ne? Wisst ihr ja Bescheid. Ähm. Ja, meine Hose ist bald im Arsch. Ja, das war. Oh Gott, ich habe vergessen, wie der Dude hieß. Ähm. Das äh, Video heißt Ziel ein Network Forensics auf dem Brian Clough Channel und äh, das Video will ich laden. Uh, so, uh, who am I? Why should... uh, hier, Kevin Tires. Um, Kevin Tires, Link ist hier immer in der Beschreibung. Uh, genau, und wir sind hier auf Lasergruppenland, dem uh, Anarchie-Server, Vanilla Anarchie-Server mit der IP 19.9.22.127.134 oder der Domain Sleeven.com. Ja, schaut doch mal vorbei für brutale Anarchie <lacht> und äh, entspannte Anarchie, weil niemand online ist. Ja, dann äh, sehen wir uns in der nächsten Folge dieser Dauerwerbesendung.